Holy smokes. Watch, guys, this is so cool. This is amazing. Look at that. Am I allowed to see that or no? I, I, I don't. And he's going bananas. What's going on? We're hanging out with Sam Pascucci today at Florida Iguana and Tortoise Breeders. Is, did I say that right? The, yeah, yeah actually, I did. It is Florida Iguana and Tortoise yeah. Breeders, but you know, we have a new name and we call it Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. That's right, Farm. Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm. But today, we're not talking about tortoises. We're not we're talking gonna, about tortoises. No, nah, man, I'm gonna reach in here and see if I can actually grab one of these. They're fast, but I want to introduce you to the Centinosaurs today. It's a type of iguana and I can't catch because I'm slow these days. Sam, are you embarrassed by this? I can't grab, I got it, I got it. I just was being a wimp. Anyway, check it out guys. These are baby spiny tail iguanas, but these aren't just any kind of spiny tail. These are actually what they call the banana phase. And Sam, as these guys grow, they get that really beautiful green and yellow, correct? Uh, they actually get yellow and black. You know, when they're okay. first hatched, they're little tiny green things. They're 100% green. Okay. And they're tiny. They're, they're like this big. And so what um, when they start to grow, right now they're about nine months old. And now you're just starting to see here on the shoulder pad, you see a little bit of yellow there. Yep and you see the green, but now you have the black bars that are gonna come in, and all of this green will turn to yellow. And the thing that's really neat about these animals is we've just walked over here, we've just reached in, and we picked these guys up, and look at this. Yeah, look at that. You talk about tame. Wow. You know, this, this it just doesn't get any tamer than this. They're here, they're living in a colony, so whenever you have animals living in a colony, a lot of times, you know, they'll be a little bit more wild because they're dealing with each other. But even in this situation, Look, look at this. Yeah, that's really cool. So these, so, you know, to, why I wanted to highlight these today with you, Sam, is these are a fantastic pet lizard. They don't get yes, huge. They don't. They're omnivores. Right. And uh, like he said, they tame up nicely. Look, this one's gonna probably do a little jump here. But I like the setup that you have. And of course, anything that's w when I'm reaching down at, is gonna think, oh my gosh, what is this big creature doing? But uh, the Centinosaur, we're gonna look at a few different, I suppose, morphs you yes, can call them. Yeah. Uh, there are also different subspecies of these. And basically this is a uh, iguanid type lizard. So it's a relative of uh, green iguanas, but they're in a completely different genus, but they are in the iguana family. Right. Uh, and they're found in South, uh, excuse me, Central America. So these guys are- They're in the Western coast okay. of, of Mexico. Okay. The Western coast of Mexico from, uh, and that, what's really interesting is they have a very diversified type of environment. They live almost down to the shore and all the way up in the mountains. Into the mountains. So there's a lot of different little sub-environments that they live in. And it just it just goes to show you, it's just a, an illustration of how easy these animals are to take care of because I have a lot of people up north that are looking for this type of uh, iguana yep. or lizard because you don't need that room. You don't gotcha. need that room like yeah. you do. They don't get six feet. You know, they get about 30, 32 inches, 34 four inches and they're so tame like this. Yeah, that's so and cool. So they, they don't buy this is this animal hasn't been tamed. I know. Oh look at that guy. Wow, that was awesome man. They are still athletic too. So so that's what's really neat. They they can live in a in a in a wide range. So you know here what we have here is something pretty simple. Okay. Is this is just this is wire underneath. Okay. And um and that way we can just spray it out and then we use these artificial plants here. And then over here, you just lift this up and that, that's how you can drain all of the water from oh, that environment when you spray. You just, so you just go in there with a hose. We don't even take them out. You can wash their thing out if you want. You can take them out and then you can use chlorine to disinfect. So we're a breeder. We end up with a lot of animals. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, your environment is not natural. But for me, the thing is, these animals don't stay here that long. Right. And I have to try to create an environment that is really sterile, that I can keep sterile, that I can, I can watch the animals, I can weigh the animals, I can measure the animals. And that way I ensure that, you know, I'm producing a, a healthy animal. So Correct. Yeah, my my enclosures aren't a piece of artwork. Right. You know, it's really much more, uh, you know, for being able to uh, care for them properly. Just the, the clinical side of gotcha. the exactly. sterilization and being able to watch the animal and but everything. But what's cool is these guys, since they do come from different type of climates or different type of habitat, you know, you could find out exactly what locale you have and then set them up appropriately. Right. If it's more desert-like, if it's more forest-like, uh, you know, coastal forest, that's really fun. For me, that's the enjoyment I 
get out of keeping reptiles is creating the habitats. Yeah, and to be perfectly absolutely. honest, a lot of people honest, do. For my baby tortoises, the same thing. It's basically what is going to meet their husbandry needs. Right. What is going to be easy for me to care for? Because when you get maintain. babies, you're getting so many. So that's why you know Sam has the greenhouses because in the winter you can just roll down these uh, roll down the, the sides, visqueen, and I turn on the heater. That's amazing. So yeah. you know, there's not an individual house here for each one. Gotcha. So that way, I just heat this room. I can control the environment. I can make it hot. I can yep. make it humid. I turn on the misters, whatever I need to do, and control this whole environment. The other thing I like about these setups, and you you may want to take, you can you can certainly borrow from breeders because check this out, guys. This is really cool. These walls are they're unable to climb up on them. So um, if you were to do something like that, um, you know, it it would be easier for a top loading or a top entry because this way you don't have to worry about the animal jumping out or running up the screen or getting out. So that's that's actually pretty cool. I like this, man. Uh, that's that uh, PVC, PVC board. It doesn't go bad, it doesn't yep. rot. It ain't cheap, but it's worth it. Okay, so where are some of the Okay, so that's bananas. Ones? We got this, the bananas. Well, no, they're they're okay. These are the bananas, right? And these are the bananas. Bananas, bananas. You got a lot of bananas, man. A lot of bananas. He's going bananas. Um, <laughs> and these are all for sale. These are all yes, babies yeah. that you produce and this sell is, here. This is from a high orange pair here. Oh, let's see this. And of course, later on in the video, guys, we're going to show you some of the adults that sired uh, these babies. So you can get an idea. Oh, yeah, look at that, though. There's, that guy's is pretty orange right there. You can already see it. Yeah, you can see And I'm, I'm colorblind, but I can really start to make it out. Now, you see this one here. Look how different he, look, that he looks than that banana. Yep. And if you look right there, do you see the orange right there? Right there, you see the orange starting yeah, to come yeah, through? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Right yeah. there. Hell. Yep. And, and how you can long, see it on the tail. How long does it take for these guys to grow and become sexually mature? Three years. Three years? be producing. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Check out their tails. When you're looking at these animals, you know, everybody wants to look at the belly. Now, these guys happen to be full, so they've got great bellies. But really, the way you're telling health in iguana is, is to look at the tail. It's all here in the tail and these back legs. That's where you're looking for the fat deposits and everything. So that's that's how you tell the health. Right on. So you can see all these guys are, in, are really healthy. Now, take a look at this other one here. Yeah, beautiful. Look at how green. Yeah. That's just he hasn't. He, he's actually going to go to this. Really? And what's kind of neat about these guys? is that through that three-year period, it's amazing the different color morphs that they'll go through. Wow. They're bright orange, then they get the black stripes, and, and then they'll, they'll shed, so you know, they'll, they'll turn into different colors, and it's just amazing to... to they're, they're different phases, though. Yeah, That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Hi, orange, orange. These are Baker Eye here. Oh, wow, Baker Eye. I've heard of these before. These are a little bit more hard to come by, or is that... Yeah, they are. And where are these guys found? Uh, Baker Eye is from, uh, I think there's, there's one. two of them down there in that corner. In yeah. Corner. Three of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tula Island. Tula Tula Island. That, isn't that Tula Island? It's oh. Off the coast of Honduras. All right, Sam, there you go. There you go. Now look at the difference in this, in, in the pattern here. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more muted, but that's really darker. cool. Yeah, 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 darker, exactly. And, but all of these guys, meanwhile, started off bright green, green, bright green, wow, and tiny. Now I was in Costa Rica, and I did see juvenile babies of those uh, on a fence post. So it's so funny when you're out there in Central America. They are, um, you know, that. But that's regular old pectinata, I believe, right? Is that what is the the most common of the oh the, the similis similis? That's the right. one. Yeah. So black that's and white. the black and white one. Yeah. Really, really silver cool. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, just amazing. Now, wait a second. I don't want to get off. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Am I allowed to see that or no? Dude, this is, this is a cyclora iguana. This is cyclora figgins eye. Look at this. This is so beautiful. That's incredible, buddy. Yeah. I can't believe that you have a uh, hatchling of figgins eye iguanas. Um, they are just amazing. And I've never seen a baby cyclora that has spots. Like, is, are you serious? Ah. We missed him. Holy smokes, can I give it a yeah, shot? go ahead. Let's see if I have long enough arms. I'll scare him back this way a little bit. There we go, there we go, there we go. We got him. Oh, these are little porkers. Yeah, they're little porkers. Oh my gosh, guys, this is so cool. This is a relative of your Cuban iguana and your rhino iguana, but uh, this is just a beautiful baby cyclora. You don't normally see this. Yeah. I knew something was different when I just looked in, but look at the face is different. Um, these are beautiful. 
Oh my gosh, Sam, this is just incredible. What's so different about it? Well, they, these are just a rare cyclora. Very, very rare here in these states. There's only, maybe there's 10 or 12 of them, something here in the states. And the fact that you have offspring is just incredible. Um, these guys are from uh, Bahamas, right? Yeah, Bahamas. Exuma Bahamas. Island. Exuma Island Iguana, look at that. Holy smokes, this is just incredible. Uh, these guys are probably just a couple hundred miles away from Florida. And it's amazing how we don't have any cyclora natively in Florida, but Every island in the Caribbean, look at this little fat son. Oh, he is. He is such a oh, cute little jump. dude. Uh, every island in the Caribbean has its own species of rock iguana, which is what they are known as, cyclora. Uh, wow, that's that's really cool, bud. I'm, I'm really appreciative you letting me grab this one. Sure. That is so, that's a treat for me. And look at how it just walked, oh, he's like, I'm out of here. Hey, so this is really cool. So on one side you have the babies, and Sam has this group of gravid, female pectinata look at the colors is there a male in there with them oh there's it's, it's 4.5 4.5 so there you go guys check it out and again just hanging out beautifully enjoying all that sun there's the male to your right look at that guy he's pretty happy to be in there with all those chickadees and um so that's really cool now you and i were speaking we actually just came back from lunch a little behind inside baseball here and you were telling me that these guys their eggs are actually a little bit of a challenge to yes, hatch they are like what what's the most difficult thing that you found about them what is it about the eggs that makes it so hard for them to they have a through? very they have a very thin skin so even temperature change you take them out of the incubator you go inside your house if you have like an air-conditioned room, the, the eggs at the right time in their development will explode. Oh my God! They'll just split and start exploding. Because their shells are so because thin. Yeah, so when they, that temperature change will make that egg wow. split and swell. So you've got to have the parameters set up prior to, of course, getting the eggs Yeah, getting the, that's the, the whole ground. trick. You can't, you can't, when these animals, we'll watch these animals and then we'll pull a female in. Okay. Because if we, if we miss her laying in 30 minutes, depending on where she lays them, she, like if she lays it on top of that yellow top, in four minutes it'll be done. They'll be wow. done in four minutes. That's cool. Even if she lays it inside the, 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 um, the laying box, you still have problems because you have other females in here that are going to go in there and disturb the eggs. Gotcha. A and also, you know, it's not the perfect medium, but inside, you know, in the incubators, I can create that perfect medium. So you want to get them in there quick. Gotcha. So here's, here's just more. Uh, there's, there's a really pretty yellow, but I don't want to dig her out because okay, no she's worries. in the box. She might be laying. She, she's probably laying. This is the male Look here. Look at the though. male. He's just getting a little scratch there. Look at that, guys. That's a that's full size adult male pectinata, banana pectinata. Right. So that's really beautiful. And really, look at that tail, everybody. These are just such cool looking lizards. They have that real dinosaur look with those high spikes, and of course uh, that spiny tail. And um, these guys will climb. They live on the ground. They're omnivores. They're going to eat vegetation. They're going to eat uh, some protein, some animal protein as well. Bird, bird eggs, uh, small rodents. But that's primarily would you say that these guys mostly will consume vegetation? When they're babies, you have to start them off on live food. Okay. And then as they grow older, it's, they're less and less dependent on it. And then after a few months, you, ha you can have them eating produce pretty easily. So gotcha. The, 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 these animals will still eat. They're still triggered when you feed them super worms or something like that. So it's a real easy way to develop a relationship as a treat and being able to, to tame that animal down. So the thing here outside you notice is that this guy, you see how dirty he is. You see yeah. all that dust and dirt on him and everything. So when they when they live outside on dust and dirt you know you don't get the you don't see you know you don't get the nicest looking colors but you go through certain times of the year and then they shed, and then that's where you see the color right or after yeah. a rainstorm or, or after a like rainstorm yeah. or something like that so. that's beautiful though they are really cool lizard. yeah it's and a neat lizard and I like, you don't need a lot of space that's why i was saying i like to highlight some lizards that some of our friends up north may be interested in because so many of you guys want you know an iguana so check this out, guys. This is what happens when the orange phase grows up. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? That I can clearly see. That's amazing. Holy smokes. And the female Sam is gravid? Yeah. Wow, look at that male. And again, that's full size. That's an adult lizard. Yeah. So that's really great. This is definitely a species that... People really should look into. Yeah, I call them a tiger stripe. Yeah. They really look like a tiger, don't they? That is amazing. That is a very, very bright orange. And look at the female down there. Look at her. She's just as beautiful. And so she's got eggs in her, so we won't bother her too much, but that's really amazing, man. 
just a cool species of lizard um, that the care really not difficult and certainly not if you guys are living up north. Lots of personality, they tame up. If you guys are looking for something other than a Euromastix or a bearded dragon, definitely look into the spiny tail iguanas. There's a lot more different subspecies out there of them. Uh, not too, you know, there's probably, I think there's close to 20 different subspecies. Um, but anyhow, uh, the ones that we've seen today make really good pets. They're attractive. And Sam happens to breed them here at Giant Tortoise Breeders. Uh, so you may want to check him out on Instagram and on YouTube because uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. And he's one of my mentors and good friends. So give him a check out, check out his animals. If you guys are interested in one, that'll be the way to get them. I just want to say thanks for hanging out with oh, us today, sure, man. Sure. I appreciate it. Sure. It's a lot of fun to see these guys and uh, I love what you're doing with them. But then Sam has another animal choice. Now look at the head on this guy. Conspicuous. Look at the head on that guy. That is really cool. Almost like an Agama head, but it's just a little bit more broad. And look at that, that is really cool, man. So Centinosaur conspiculosa. And then look at the size of the spines on that tail. Wow. Serious stuff. That is cool. Where is she? Oh, she's down here. Look at how fat and happy she is, man. Oh, he's telling you to back up. Look at her. Oh, oh she's out of here. She doesn't want to be seen in such a delicate position, uh, condition. <laughs> she's not, wow, that is awesome. I'm gonna step out. That is cool, guys. Well, listen, we've seen a few different species and subspecies of the Centinosaur, uh, the spiny tail iguana. Thank you so much, Sam. You don't have any more surprises for us, right? We're good? Yeah, we're good. All we're right. Good. Go ahead and give them a follow on Instagram. Appreciate and it, folks. On YouTube. And of course, like and comment what you thought of today's video. Thank you guys so much. Right. Thank you, Sam. Take care, See everybody. You, buddy. See ya.